Calculations, Analysis, and Conclusion Ohm's Law has I equal to V over R, which we're going to rewrite as V equals IR. We're going to compare this to the slope-intercept form of the line. If we plot voltage on the y-axis and current on the x-axis, then the slope of the line will be the resistance, and the intercept will be through the origin. Since current depends on voltage, it's actually the dependent variable and would normally be on the y-axis. However, we don't have to follow that rule. It's more convenient to plot current on the x-axis so we can simply take the slope of the line as the resistance. However, if a student does plot current on the y-axis, then they just need to take the reciprocal, 1 over the resultant slope, to find the resistance. So the student should sketch the graph of voltage versus current for each resistor. Make sure each graph has a title, and then the axis labels with the units, and then a best fit line. Do not just connect the dots. Note that the line of best fit goes through the point 0, 0, even though that was not a measured data point. The reason we can do this is that there is no current without any voltage. If you are using a graphical utility to obtain the best fit line, make sure you add the point 0, 0. Find the resistance of the spool for solving for the slope of the line. Take two points on the line, and notice they don't have to be the actual measured points. We want points on the line where it intersects one of the bold lines. So we have this point here and this point here. The slope is delta y over delta x, which is 9.7. So the resistance of this particular spool is 9.7 ohms. Repeat this process for each of the other graphs. If the best fit lines are linear, and they can be drawn pretty nicely here, this is pretty good, pretty much a straight line, then the resistor follows Ohm's law. The positive slope and linear relationship show that current is directly proportional to voltage. As voltage increases, so does the current. Calculate the percent error between the measured calculated resistances and known resistances for the spools. If the first spool was calculated to be 9.7 ohms, and the actual value is 10 ohms as listed on the uh, spool, then the percent error will be the measured calculated value minus the accepted value over the accepted value, take the absolute value of that, times 100, and we come up with 3.0%. An error of 10% or less is a reasonable result. There are several possible sources of error to consider. The rest of the circuit might have some non-negligible resistance. The data would then be consistently off by a proportional amount for all three resistors. Also, if the wires heat up too much, then Ohm's law no longer applies and the data will be nonlinear. Students may attempt to draw a straight line where there shouldn't be one or they may have not taken enough data points to observe a nonlinear relationship. Additionally, while not a valid true source of error, little redundant there, students may have also read from the wrong scale on either of the meters. Occasionally, there are problems with the rheostat where some sections of the wire do not work. This may appear as data that doesn't change much if the slider was moved in relatively small increments. A larger span of voltages may reduce the effect of this on your results.